Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to show you how it's great to have access to the GM factory service manuals, but it's sometimes not enough, and it's sometimes not necessary. Today I'm going to show you how you can access additional technical information that's released by General Motors, service bulletins, coverage updates, and preliminary information. So I'll show you how to get those and what kinds are available. So there's primarily three types of information that go beyond the service manuals and the unit repair manuals. The first type is preliminary information. These communications from GM Engineering may be errata to the manuals. They can be temporary workarounds or temporary corrections, or they might be an outright repair. They're often superseded by an actual service bulletin when GM determines a final resolution to the problem, and they're usually numbered starting with a PIP or PIT character prefix. The core communication would be the service bulletin, and these can either be replacements for the preliminary information communications, or they can come out as the initial service information to the dealership service department from GM Engineering without having preliminary information. These cover a broad range of topics beyond just repair guidance, and it's not uncommon for there to be multiple revisions to these by GM. And you can tell the difference by looking at the suffix code at the end of the bulletin number. There'll be a letter that goes up like A, B, C, D, E, right, as they improve and, and correct these. I'll show you some example of these in just a moment. There are several types of service bulletins. The most common is the technical service bulletin, and then there's also an information service bulletin. But you can find things about service updates, warranty updates, uh, special coverages, and even preliminary information bulletins. And then the third one is the special coverage adjustment. So this type of communication is when there's a problem in the field, it's not one that warrants a recall. This is not maybe a safety situation, but it's a pervasive problem enough that GM decides for customer satisfaction reasons to extend the warranty coverage for a particular part on the vehicle or a particular option on the vehicle to cover any occurrence of the issue over some specified period. And I'll show you an example of one of those as well. Let's take a look at some of these examples. So here's an example preliminary information uh, communication. So this is something to do with a, a check engine light and a particular diagnostic code affecting these particular trucks. So this is something that got published up in the upper right as bulletin PIT 5715A, published on March 22nd of 2021. Now here's an example of a technical service bulletin, and, and this one in particular supersedes and replaces that preliminary information I showed you earlier. Uh, this came out on May 2021. It has a number of 21-NA-121. There's no letter suffix at the end, so this is the first one. And you can see right there, kind of towards the middle, it states that it replaces the preliminary information PIT 5715A and tells the dealership to discard the previous one. And this covers some information about trucks relating to that same problem. Here's an example of an information service bulletin. So you can see the bold bar in black under service bulletin can either say information, it can say technical, it can say um, service update, or it can say warranty adjustment, any number of things on those categories I gave you earlier. So this is just an example of a different type of service bulletin. Here's an example. Uh, by the way, this one also shows you the suffix example. So you can see on its bulletin number, it ends in an L. And if you look at the square note in the middle, they tell you that this supersedes the K revision and it should be discarded. So when you look for these bulletins, you want to find the most recent revision to get the most accurate information. So you don't want to look at the earlier ones because they've been superseded and replaced with either better information or different part numbers or an improved approach to addressing the problem. Here's an example of a special coverage adjustment. You can see this is a very different format. It's typically got a four or five numeric code, and, and you'll find this associated with the warranty of the vehicle. And I'll link up in the upper right here a video I did earlier where you can find out if you have one of these extended warranties on your vehicle. But you can see this particular one covers a number of different trucks, and, in, and the bottom line is that they're saying that for an additional 10 years or an additional 120,000 miles, whichever occurs first, 
GM will extend the warranty for this particular problem, in this case relating to the diesel emission fluid tank reservoir on the truck. So that's an example of one of those. So those are all the different types of, of and just some, some examples of all the different types of service information you can get. So now, how do you get this? How can you find this cheaply, or better yet, free? Let me show you that. All right, guys, let's take a look at how you can get these bulletins. And here's an example of a service bulletin from GM. This is the kind of information you can find. This particular one I just pulled up randomly is an announcement about the three oil filters that you see here, the PF63, 64, and PF48, had an improvement done so that the gasket doesn't come off when you're trying to install them. This was something that was put into production at AC Delco starting on October 1st, 2020, right? So this is just an example of the kind of information that you can find that GM lets out periodically that goes above and beyond what's in the service manual itself. So how do I get information like this as a DIYer or even as a, as a small shop? Well, the first example I'm going to show you is AC Delco's technical delivery system. This is the official portal for this type of information from General Motors. This is what you would use if you were an independent service center or a DIYer to give you access to the same information that the GM dealership technicians are going to have. If you scroll down to what's called service information, basically the deal is for three days, for a long weekend, for 22 bucks, you can pick that, check out, and, and pay that amount, and then you'll get access to all this information here service campaigns and service bulletins from 1980 to currently, unit repair manuals from 97 to currently. A unit repair manual is like a transmission or a transfer case type of service manual. Uh, a service manual for the vehicle from 96 to the current time or owner's manuals from 2003 to the current time. So these are all digital where you can look at them online for this three days at 22 bucks a pop. I would tell you that this is the best route if you've got a newer vehicle. And this is the best route if you've got a very old vehicle because the free option I'm going to show you, you're not going to have as timely updates. So if you've got a 2022 or 2023, you want to go this route. Similarly, if you've got a vehicle from the 1980s or very early 90s, you want to also go this route because the free option I'm going to show you just doesn't go far, you know, doesn't go that far back. So you're not going to necessarily be able to get what you need. So that's option one, 22 bucks for three days. If that's too steep for you, then you've got the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration website. Now this website um, is periodically getting changed. So what I'm gonna show you could, could be different by the time you see this, but this is what it looks like while we're making the video. And, and basically the deal is if you come in here under the VIN section, which is the pre-selected uh, item on the website when you first come in, and we're gonna come in here, we're gonna give it a, a VIN from a salvage yard vehicle here. This is a 2008 wrecked Silverado that it'll do for what we want to show. And it's going to go calculate some information about this. It's got some stuff about the recall. We're not really interested in that. What we're looking for is more information on this vehicle. Click more information or to learn more. And when you come down, it tells you that there's some other information about this vehicle. And what we're looking for down here is we go to the very bottom as we scroll through this, We'll get to this section called Manufacturer Communications. This is what we want. And when you click Manufacturer Communications, and you can see here that it may not go back any further than 2012. So it's actually not even as, as far as I originally thought. So not only the 80s and 90s, but you probably don't want to go this route for a vehicle from the early 2000s either. But anyway, here's all the service bulletins. Now they're not gonna be as well organized as they are on AC Delco TDS. Uh, they're just all jumbled in here and you gotta pick a particular category. So let's see, let's see something that we might be able not to have uh, too much stuff with that we wanna go take a look at. Let's say we wanted to go take a look at uh, fuel system other. And then we came down here, we'd be able to open up each one of these bulletins and we'd be able to see what, it, what it's about and whether we wanted to, whether it applied to what we're interested in or whether we wanted to look at it. So we can come down and check each one of these. And if we find one that looks interesting, here's one that talks about a P0442 code 
and some updated information about how you might want to chase that. If you wanted to go look at that, then what you'd find is a PDF that's attached for that particular item. And then you can click on it and you can pull up that particular service bulletin for free and review it. So that's all there is to it. So I hope one of these two you find useful. And again, this uh, government website is constantly getting tweaked and twiddled with, and this information just keeps moving around and there's no real way to search it. But it's there, and if you've got the time to go through it, and you can at least identify the high-level category that you're interested in to this degree here, then it can save you the 22 bucks uh, on the three-day run of the other one. And it also will give you a PDF that you can save to your PC or your iPad and have access to it at a later date as well if you need to come back and reference it later. Anyway, those are the two options. I hope you found this useful. If this saved you some time or money, pay it forward and hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching.